Hello, 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 friends. Wiggity here with another Stardew Valley guide. Here to help you with what you are looking for and hopefully make your playthrough just a little bit easier. Alrighty, let's talk about ancient fruit. This fruit is probably one of my favorite crops to grow up in my greenhouse with, as it has one of the highest profit margins as far as ever bearing crops goes. Very few crops may be slightly more profitable in the get-go, but ancient fruit is a lower maintenance crop and usually doesn't take any money to get started with. Just takes a bit of luck to get a hold of. I'll be going over where to get your hands on this artifact and seed, and what all that you can do with it. Real quick, there are some light spoilers in reference to some post-community-centered quests, but I'll be marking those and giving a quick warning beforehand. First up, let's talk about the different ancient seeds. There is the seed packet, which you can plant in the ground, and the ancient seed artifact, which you can turn into those seeds that you plant into the ground. I'm going over all the ways that you can get both in this video, but if at some point you want to complete your museum, you'll need to find the artifact version. If you are just after profits though, no need to worry about all of that. The seed packet that is not the artifact can be found a couple of ways. First from our wild card, the traveling cart. There is a 1.26% chance that the ancient seed will be sold by the cart, ranging anywhere from 100 to 1000 gold per packet. It can be a bit pricey, but after you get a seed maker, you'll be making more and more in no time, so I find it worth it. You'll find her around on Fridays and Sundays and during the night market at the ocean in the winter time. The next way to get the plantable seeds are, well, with a seed maker. One of my favorite ways, though it can be a bit time consuming. First, you need to get to level nine of farming in order to craft a seed maker or get one as a reward from finishing the dye bundle. It is also entirely possible to find one of these in a treasure room in Skull Cavern as well. Making seeds with a seed maker is a great way to save money and not have to sit outside of Pierre's locked door because you forgot it was Wednesday again. And while making seeds, there is a small chance, a 0.5% chance that instead of getting whatever crop you're making, you'll get an ancient fruit seed. Luck has no effect on this. It really is based on a random number generator or RNG for short. If you are searching for ancient seeds this way, I highly recommend just rotating some cheap crops into the mix that you have plenty of. I normally have a ton of blueberries left over in the summer or extra potatoes from spring and will use those for attempting to turn into ancient fruit seeds. You can use some of the seasonal forage bowls too. And the last way to get ancient seed packets is, well, you have to find the artifact for it first. When you do find your first artifact, you need to donate it to Gunther at the museum. You can't actually make the seed packets yet until you do. Your reward for donating one is a seed packet to get you going and the recipe to make more ancient seeds with any more artifacts that you may find. But of course, we're going to need to find that artifact first. There are a few ways to find the seed artifact, which I'll go over now. First, being an artifact, of course, this item can be dug up from an artifact spot, but not every spot will do. While you are looking for dino eggs in the mountains, quarry, and bathhouse area, these artifact spots have a 0.7% chance of giving you the ancient seed. You can also get it from an artifact spot in Cindersnap Forest as well. There are a few artifacts that you can find tilling the soil in the mines. Sadly, this is not one of them. The next method is my preferred method for finding this artifact, and that's with hunting bugs. In the mines from levels 1 to 30, there are three types of bugs that you can find. The bug, or patroller, I've heard them called. The cave fly, and the grub. Each of these all have a 0.5% chance of dropping an ancient seed artifact. So if you get that bug swarm in the caves, maybe stick around a bit and take out as many as you can. You may just get that ancient seed. And there are two other bugs found elsewhere that you can get this from as well, the mutant bug and the mutant grub. These bugs can only be found in two places. Okay, so the first method is one of those light spoilers that we have with a post community center quest. Head on over to this timestamp to skip this quick part. 
First, we have the sewers. You'll need to have at least 90 artifacts donated to Gunther to access the sewers and have the community center completed, as well as the dark talisman for the wizard to get access to this side area here, the mutant bug lair. This area is my favorite place to farm for bug meat as well, especially for the new community board quest for Willy, as there are tons of bugs here every day. But I know that not everyone looking for the seed has access to this area yet, so if you have access to the Skull Caverns, if you reach a prehistoric level, you can oftentimes find this bug and grub there. I find hitting the upper levels of the mines to be easier and more accessible to everyone though, so I suggest that if you are searching for the artifact, do that. Also, if you have the Burglar Ring Monster Eradication Reward from slaying dust sprites, be sure to wear it while searching for the seed because it helps out immensely. Next, we have another great method for when you are looking for artifacts in general, and that is with fishing and hooking a treasure chest. You can boost your chances of getting a treasure chest with a magnet, the treasure hunter, and having the pirate profession, and having a bit of luck too. Certain items can show up in the treasure chest while you are fishing depending on how far you cast, your fishing level, your luck, and where you are fishing at. Luckily, the ancient seed ignores most of that. In order for you to find the ancient seed in a treasure chest, you can be fishing really anywhere and you can cast as short or as far as you want. You only have to have found at least one artifact before you can find this in a treasure chest and be at least level 2 of fishing. With that, you'll have a 0.8% chance, or if you found all the lost books already, a 0.9% chance to hook this artifact in a chest. With those luck boosters I mentioned earlier, it is bound to happen eventually. <laughs> Next up we have something that was added with the 1.4 update in 2019, and that is through a great method to getting some of those hard to find artifacts, the artifact trove. These are found a few ways as well, first being from the quarry cave once you get the quarry unlocked and the vault bundle completed. After you visit this place, you'll be met with some haunted skulls, who can now sometimes appear in the normal mines too on special quarry levels. They have a 1.3% chance of dropping a trove. The trove can also be traded for in Calico Desert with the Desert Trader any day. You'll need to give them 5 Omni Geodes for one trove. And just a little light spoiler ahead, if you want to skip this real quick, head to this time frame right here. With the 1.5 update, we have two more ways of finding the artifact troves as well. After you've made your way to Ginger Island, you can find some in the artifact spots there. And if you opted for the beach farm, there are crates that can wash up on the shore. The type of loot that you get in these depends on how much your farmhouse has been upgraded. Once you've upgraded your house twice to get the extra rooms, artifact troves can show up inside of these supply crates. With that, we need to take these artifact troves over to our trusty blacksmith, Glint, to correct these open. Unfortunately, we do need him for this, as the geode crusher won't work on these troves. There are 27 total items that could come from an artifact trove, all with an equal 3.7% chance of showing up. And wouldn't you know it, the ancient seed is just one of those things. It took about 11 troves out of this first round to get my first one. And the last way that you can find the ancient seed artifact is back over at Skull Cavern. The prehistoric levels have a small chance of showing up on any level, and they can have some weeds and foliage to cut down as you're making your way to the ladder. These can possibly drop the ancient seed for you too, which I think is pretty cool. And then, well, there's the good old reliable item codeway, though this is only able to be done on PC versions. These are the codes for the three items for the fruit, the seed, and the artifact. So now that we know all the ways to get the seed, what are all of the uses? First, the artifact is donatable to the museum, which we went over a bit before. 
As for gifting, nobody really loves the seed, actually most people hate it, but now the dwarf and penny like most artifacts, so you could always gift them one if you really want to. You could always sell them if you really want to, but you're not going to get very much money. There's better things that you can do with that. As for tailoring, the artifact used in the sewing machine makes the brown suit. And the best thing to do with the seed is to just craft a packet, plant it, and let it grow. This seed can only grow in spring, summer, and fall, and takes 28 days to grow, or less time with either speed grow or the agriculturist profession. After that, you'll get a new fruit every seven days. If you have a greenhouse or access to Ginger Island, you can grow this plant year round. And as for the garden pots that Granny gives you, you can't plant this in that, as the roots won't have enough room to grow. The fruit from this plant has many uses. First, I am a huge fan of crops that I can plant once and never have to worry about again. Even though fruits like the star fruit might be a bit more profitable, the fact that I can plant agent seeds and never have to buy another seed again is what sold me on this one. Your first harvest of this plant will gain you 38 farming experience points. There are 11 villagers that like getting this as a gift, but it's not beloved by anybody. And the fruit can be used for tailoring, taking it over to a sewing machine who will give you the genie pants. Of course, taking a fruit and putting it in a seed maker gives you a chance of getting one to three seeds back or one to four mixed seeds if you get unlucky. Let's touch a little bit on the money. You can sell the ancient fruit as is at a base value of 550 gold, which goes up to 1100 depending on the quality, and up to 1210 if you have the tiller profession. I prefer to process my ancient fruit. They can be made into jelly or wine, both being very profitable. Keep in mind that the quality of the crop has no effect on the value you get after it is processed. There are different reasons why one might put ancient fruit in a keg or a preserve jar. It really just depends on what you prefer to do. Preserve jars take the base value of the crop before taking tiller into account, doubles it, and adds 50 gold for the final product. So ancient fruit jelly sells for 1150 gold or 1610 with artisan. The jelly takes two to three days or 4,000 in-game minutes to be finished processing. For kegs, they take the crop value of 550 gold and triple it to 1650. You can't take jelly and make it sell for any more by aging it, but you absolutely can with wine with casks in your fully upgraded farmhouse. Iridium quality ancient fruit wine with the artisan profession can sell for a whopping 4,620 gold each. I like aging this wine up because I like to have a lower maintenance farm and I don't have to keep spending time switching out produce in my jelly jars. Wine takes 10,000 minutes or six and a quarter in-game days to complete and an extra 56 days in a cask to get to iridium quality. So being that the fruit takes seven days to grow and the kegs take uh, close to seven days to finish, a lot of people really like to turn this crop into wine. Making an aging wine is a lot more hands off, but if you are looking for a quicker profit, processing pretty much any fruit in a preserves jar is the way to go. It takes a third of the time and still more than doubles your value. But ultimately, how you get your gains is up to you. I like kegs because I'm kind of lazy and I got a lot of other things to do. Now, there are a couple more things that we could use this ancient fruit for. With the 1.5 update, you now have the option to set up the Remixed Community Center. And one of the bundles you might end up getting is the Rare Crops Bundle in the Pantry. You only need to turn in one of the two rare crop options for this, either the sweet gem berry or the ancient fruit, and you will receive a preserve jar for this as a reward. The last way is a bit of a spoiler for those who haven't finished the community center, so feel free to skip this last one if you'd like to. I'll leave the time to skip to on the screen here. 
Okay, we have the missing bundle. This will only show up for you if you didn't go the Jojo way and fixed up the community center completely. After Jojo Mart has been broken down, the next rainy day it will get hit with lightning and let you head inside. Inside you'll find the missing bundle, which gets this place all fixed up to the brand new theater. One of the things that you can contribute is five gold star quality ancient fruit. All right, well, that is all the ways to find one that is in game as of right now, as well as all of their uses. So tell me, what method are you going to try to find the seeds and what are you planning on doing with your ancient fruit once you get some? Let me know down in the comments. Me personally, like I said, I love having a good crop that I don't have to replant and I can just worry about once a week. So growing it and making it into wine is usually the best for me. Well friends, I hope this video has helped you out at all. Be sure to share with a friend that might need this info too. I'm Wickedy, thanks for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you in the next one.